what's up guys uh, welcome back to the channel and today's video is what we're gonna do is we have to trim this this entryway of this door it looks so looks so boring so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim this out and we'll see how it goes but first things most is we have to we have to put a jam here all the way around so that it looks smooth and before we do we put all those trim here and with a back band i'm not using the i'm not using the the uh, like a normal casing i'm just gonna do i'm just gonna use the the flat uh, pine board which is already prime it's easy for us to paint to paint and we're gonna use the back band to incorporate that uh, that board so that we have at least you know like some details and we save uh much money than buying those uh, uh those uh, regular uh, door trims which is really you know like which is really uh, costly with those uh, fancy uh, uh door trim so for this time i'm gonna show you when i when i when i start working with that trim and yep first things most is we're gonna measure this uh, jam here we're gonna take a measurement with which i already took a measurement from here the top right over here i got a 32 and three quarter which i already wrote it down which i did it yesterday so all right guys we'll dig it in yeah so right we already did uh, we already brought it here our Materials for that, and what we're gonna do is first is we have to cut first the longest uh, the two the two sides, which is the longer one, and so that we ha we don't have to be get you know like uh, get short for a board because like the one that I bought is just like exactly for the whole uh, jam for the whole jam that I that I got, which is total of 16 foot, and Yep, we already measured it and we already have the we already have the materials in here and we'll start this job on. Alright, first thing we're gonna do is we have to cut the longest uh, <coughs> side before we do on the the horizontal one so that we have we don't have to get shortened. So yep, we already did a measurement for that. We cut two pieces of that and there you go. That was the first one. Also, one thing before you before you started uh, you start your, your project especially during the trims always calibrate your miter saw it's like easy to you know like so that you don't have, you always have a, a tight miter or those angles that you're gonna you're gonna joint and square so we're gonna cut the 32 and 3 quarter for that 32 and 3 quarter there you go. So now we have the jam. And as you can see it here, and the reason why the, why we don't have to uh, and my third is one is this will goes like this. 
So it goes like this on the jam. So we don't have to miter it because right over here, right over here, is we have to cover this one with another trim with a one eight, with a one uh, this one sixteen or one eight uh, uh, reveal that shows us a very good, uh, very nice detail. So, you know what, guys? We'll nail this on. Yeah, right, here we go. That we already uh, cut the uh, the particular measurement of this uh, jam here, which we already did. And usually, the lumber, any MDF, like you know, like my, just like my wall. My wall is like five inch uh, thick, so there's no there's no uh, five inch thick, like exact five inch. It's always like if you're gonna buy one by five, that's always one. Uh, that's always like four and a half, like one and uh, four and a half, or a three quarter and four and a half. So what I did, I just bought the the six uh, the six inch uh, uh, pine uh, pine pine board, and I just strip it here in the side so that I could make I could get a five five inch uh, thickness over here so everything would be flash okay well before we're gonna nail this in uh we have to make it sure that everything is squared because otherwise all our uh, trims here on the top it doesn't go square that's gonna give you a, a hard time which is thing but this time i already shimmed this one over here so that i got a level make sure that you use a level just to make it sure that you could make it square Afterwards, I already leveled this one, which is really perfectly level. You can see it here. So now we got to We have to put the side on, and yep, the same thing. We have to square. Have to plumb this one, make it so that we have a perfect square in this corner, right? So we have to make it sure this is plumb, and this one's a bit off. Yeah, it's a little bit off. So what we're gonna do is we have to shim this one. We have to shim this one a little bit, right here, and should be fine all the way down. And as soon as you get this this jam uh, plumb, you're gonna have a perfect square over here over this corner both uh, both sides so what we're gonna do is we have to nail this down here yep okay then cut you're right this time I already uh, plumb this a board here which I already shim here you can see this gap in here already shim it from the bottom and it's already squared both sides so that's very important on how to you know to uh, square the the door jam or the entryway jam that's what I called and to accomplish that a uh, perfect square uh, jam so right now we're already uh, ready to nail those uh, a trim board we have all the way around so that we could uh, start uh, uh, putting on the trim and the back band as well but before that we have to uh, mark on the 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 detail uh, the reveal that we have to we have to put on that board on the side for the trim and and it's all it's always it, it always looks so good like if you're gonna put a reveal on it like in the 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 door jump into the trim like at least a, a one eighth of an inch all the way around and right here i'm using my uh uh carpenter square which uh the combination square and i always 
prefer the one eighth of an inch, which I always, you know, I, like it's it's my it's a self preference actually. So from here, I'm gonna start marking it, marking it from top all the way down. And yep, it is always good that you put at least in uh, a one eighth of an inch reveal on that so that it will give an additional you know additional detail to your trim and as you can see it here this guy's having a hard time and putting on the line because that would be our preference every time we put the the trim so from that uh from this uh I'm now as you can see I also mark it down from the other side as well so that it's more easy to nail that uh, that flat board in there that we have a reference line and I get a little bit confused in here which one I'm gonna pick up which one which you can see the gap there that gap already like it's already shim i already nailed on there so you can see that that line which i already drawn in there so now it's ready for so right, for we the just did uh, cut the 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 other piece so what we're going to do is we have we just have to we just have to trace this one because it, we can flip this, this, this is the best thing of this board. We can just flip this one without without any, like, you know, like, not like the other boards in the Home Depot or Lost that uh, they have different side. The other side is too rough, the other side is so smooth, but this one, they really did it so good on this thing. So we just have to trace this one so that we have the same exact length for the for the side okay so there you go uh, gonna cut this one on 90 degrees on this I have to flip that aside okay have these two sides or this is for two sides and now we have to cut the we have to measure the thing for the top okay so all right here's a trick of cutting this uh <coughs> this a uh, long board with a miter in the end like cutting shorter miter so what we're gonna do here this is a very easy trick so first thing is you just I just cut this uh I just cut this uh this 45 degrees angle in here. The trick of that is we have to just gonna show you this thing. So the trick of that is we can measure this one, this this miter over here right all the way over here for your exact length you're just gonna add up this one you have a distance over here like three and a half from this uh, from this angle this 90 degrees angle uh, this 90 degrees angle over here you have a three and a half distance over here so what you're gonna do is you're gonna add up the, that one into your 31 for me I have a 31 uh, 31 and 716 on my on my uh, short side of my of my miter so 31 and 716 that's what we have to uh, get it from here and all the way here all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add up this one this three and a half over here this distance right on the angle and you have to multiply that by two because you have two sides right 
so that will be 7 inches. So 31 and 7, uh, 16. So that's going to be 30, uh, 7, that's going to be 38 and 7, 16. All right. So now that's a 38 and 7, 16. So we're going to do, we have to mark that here to mark. And of course, we're going to we're gonna draw the that 45 degrees angle now, like both inside. So there you go. Got it here. And we'll set up 45 degrees. Right there. Make it sure that your fence is always clean all the time because Sometimes there's a debris over there that are accumulating, so you won't you won't get the exact right. I'm gonna show you how that works. That was a perfect uh, measurement all the time. So, as I've said, we need a we need a 31 and 716 from here until over here. So, we just mark it down all this line over here, right where we mitre it. So you can see. All right, that's dead on. That's dead on th and seven. As you can see it, uh, dead on there. So, right, let's go and nail this in. So that's a trick, guys, and for cutting this uh, this inside miter, so that you don't have to uh, punch a hole or whatever nail uh, nail over here and then hook your hook your hook your uh, tape so that's the easiest way you just have to you just have to determine the distance between this uh, between this uh, 90 degrees angle over here all the way to your to your uh, miter the high end and you have to multiply that one by two because you have two sides right all right so all right let's go and do this yeah, all right for this time we already nailed those uh, one by four uh, casing that we have then one by four board that we did cut it and yep i'm nailing it down now and yeah after this we're gonna incorporate it yeah right, the, there you go we already cased this band. one and now we have to incorporate this one right here in the side with a back band which I'm just gonna show you how that gonna be look so different after all. Yeah, all right, guys. So there you go. We already uh, cap this uh, back band that we have. As you can see, it is look like this. <sighs> look like this. I choose this one with just a very simple uh, detail on it, so that we could have. Uh, and I choose this wider back for that. For me, I have a purpose on that. Like, so you can see it here. It'll look more decent than you have this reveal in here. One is reveal in here, and then right over here, it smoothly goes up to the back band, which you can see this detail also over here that incorporates. So, it's gonna look so nice. And the thing here at the back, You're right over here I just try to overdub this uh, audio because my mic doesn't work anymore so right over here as you can see the top wasn't nailed the back band yet and you can see there's a gap right o down on the right on the corner so because I haven't nailed that one yet so as soon as uh, I'm done nailing all this uh, back band and this side then I can close that gap on the other side as well 
so you don't have to worry about that gap because it's still not nailed yet and of course always use the eight uh, for me I'm oh I always use the eight engage uh, brad nail so that it won't leave a, a big nail hole on my trim and at this, this time I'm trying to nail down uh, to nail all those uh, this back band here on the side and as soon as I'm done here then I'm going to the other side to close the gap so don't worry about all those nail holes we can fill it up the one with a with a spackle always uh, remember that don't fill up your nail hole with a with a caulk always use the spackle so we're gonna do this side now as well so, so you can see right uh, the top corner there's a gap on here so we're gonna close the one as soon as we nail that the top trim so all right we go is all nailed down now and getting ready to calc all these uh, gaps in here well for the gaps we could use the we could use the the dab uh, caulking which is paintable and it's so it's a good product that it wouldn't you know it wouldn't it wouldn't sink and yep the the only uh, I'm not really a good uh, in caulking but the only the only tip and the trick for that to have a good caulking result is a damp cloth always have a damp cloth when you're caulking a gaps because you could always like you know don't worry about those existing uh, caulk because you can clean the one afterwards using a damp cloth that's the only trick it doesn't matter how much uh, existing as long as you clean and smooth all those uh, existing caulk that it would give you a better result like i know there's so many uh, caulking guy in there that they, they're really good and yep i've seen them doing that and they're really good i really you know really uh I admire those people that they're really, really good in that but for DIYers out there you don't have to get frustrated about caulking because like as long as you have a damp cloth all the time then just smooth all those existing uh, existing caulk and you're good to go for that and right now I'm still caulking all these gaps in here and trying to to clean all the existing especially corners one because every time you have an existing caulk it always pushes through the corner and all those uh, those angles in there and it will accumulate in there so damp cloth is the key for that and I've been doing this so many times and I could still say that I'm not a good in caulking but always gives me a better result as long as you clean it all those existing thing and you have to push it through all this uh the caulk especially in the gaps just push it through then whatever exists wipe it then you can see it here i keep doing it right in the corner because whatever i push it from the other side going to the corner it always dump there and it builds up so try to clean all those corners and you can see it here I got a tiny gap in here then just push it I don't want to leave any gap into the trim because it doesn't look nice doesn't look right and right over here I try to so you can see there's a tiny gap on that reveal but I'm not worried about it working with this uh, calcing with this is the best way to close all those tiny gaps and yep this kind of uh, 
at Colic is, uh, you know, like, uh, I was, I was using the other Colic before, which is really not good, and I've tried this one once, and it gives me a better result, and, yep, it, you could paint it, like, after 20 minutes of, you know, like, if I'm applying this one, you can paint it after 20 minutes, but what I used to do, after I calc, after I calc and clean everything, I always pass it with a with a 320 grit sandpaper because I don't want to leave any mark of a calc in there, especially if you're painting white or like you know this this stream. It always leaves a mark all those uh, all those uh, uh, calc in there, those ex ex existing calc. So yep. You can see all these corners in here. There's a dump. Uh, I'm using damp cloth right at the corner, and all those uh, reveal and those uh, details in there. And that's a very important uh, important to keep those uh, corner clean. And what it did here is still keep on caulking. I already said so many times about cal caulking, caulking. I don't know why. So right guys, we're almost done of doing this one. Then we're just gonna try to fill up all those holes, those uh, nail holes. But for the nail holes, we're not gonna use the calc. Right here, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm just trying to cover all those tiny gaps right in the details from the back band. But for the nail holes, never use the calc. Always use the spackle. So right here, I'm just trying to uh, smoothing everything or whatever there is still have a tiny gaps or you know as I've said gaps or holes or tiny holes in that uh, trim work it doesn't look nice if you leave something over there like take time is your you know never never rush this kind of project especially trim works so that you always have a better soul it doesn't really take a day or two to do this project. The first project that I did in my house about this trim, you know, I, I really thought I was, you know, I was so intimidated because I thought that it was really hard, but it's not. Every DIYers out there I encourage you to do this thing because this will save you a lot of money and, of course, you learn doing this thing and it's not that hard everybody could achieve this one there's it's not a rocket science to achieve all these uh, uh, beautiful trim works so right now we're pretty done and we're just gonna wait like you know a little time to dry a bit and we'll pass we'll Pass this one with a 20, uh, 320 grit sandpaper. Uh, we're gonna be good. You can see it here. It's all smooth now and clean. And still, I keep cleaning on it. Because, uh, as I said, it's a trim work. Look at that. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Never stop talking. See that miter corner in there? Yeah, but it's very important that if you're gonna work with a with a trim work, you should be very precise on on the my on the miter corner, because that's why you work for it. Yeah, right, guys. Here we go. We already done all this. Uh, all right. Uh, filling up this from holes. here. It's pretty this done, and it's all ready for for painting. And so, like yep, it's already, smooth now. It's already for paint. We already sand, uh, already passed it prime, so we have uh, with a 320 uh, uh, grid sandpaper. Uh, so, and this is already goes. for You can see this is not a painting. This is not actually a one whole piece of a, one whole piece of a, uh, I call this the, the door casing. So, what I did is this. I just got this, I just bought this uh, 1x4 uh, prime flat board 
which and then I incorporate it with this uh, back band here. This back band. This is this is not one. This is not, this is not uh, together with this piece. So I just incorporated it. I don't have a sample in here, but I'm gonna show you that one in my next, next video and how to uh, do that one. Like we have to assemble one whole piece. So just a weekend project. It doesn't take a long time. When you have all the materials gathered, you have all those uh, tools that you know, necessary tools to use. It's not gonna take that long. So it's just like a weekend project, and you don't have to. Uh, I, you know, I know that you know. Uh, I know the first time it so looks so intimidating how to do it, but for this, uh, it's not really. It's all basic thing to you know door casing, window casing. It's all basic uh, carpentry. So, but you have to be like, you know, not like those are uh, pro, like they're so precise and everything. Like, you know, and for me, like, you know, I've been doing this like for, it's been like two, three years already. And yeah, I just want to show it to you how to like look custom door casing, not like those uh, uh, typical uh, door casing or door, door trim, which is really, you know, try to, try to, uh, do something really uh, unique and for this thing over here that's why I choose this one because I have a plan to I have a plan to change the baseboard here as you can see it here this one here I'm gonna replace I'm gonna take this off uh, I'm gonna take the I'm gonna use the step be uh, bevel uh, baseboard which is that really fits in this uh, thing over here as you can see at the back back here we have this we have this uh, thickness in, in here you have so many options that you could do here at the back of this like it's a limited thing that you could you could do something about over here because this colonial it's so it's so out, outdated already so i want to i want to remove this and change it so yeah all right guys and for the next video that we're gonna tackle is like you know how i how I accomplished all these corners in here. Uh, usually, like, you know, I did it one by one, but I usually assemble all those things, all these uh, trims, you know, just one just one time, and then just insert it into the, to the entryway, which is more easy for me. But for now, I just did it like one by one so that you can see it. And of course, like, you know, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you which uh, basic tools, the tools that we're gonna use and need for this thing whatever materials that what we have to use clear it out and yeah all right i'll see you in the next one and also don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you will be updated to my upcoming one ciao okay.